Hey there guys and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 13. <clears throat> In the last episode we did the first episode of the post game. <clears throat> so we beat the game and watched the final ending scenes. And then you can have the option to save in another slot. And if you save in another spot, the next time you reload that save, you'll be right at the front, right before the final boss. And this is post-game. So on the last episode, I explained everything, what post-game is and how we were going to be progressing through it. Also, we spent our CP to level our characters down the Crystarium Stage 10 and their primary roles. So on the last episode, we progressed far enough to get everyone their fourth accessory slot. So now all of our characters can equip four accessories. Alright, so now that we've done that, on the last episode I explained that the first thing we're going to do is get the growth egg. So the growth egg will give us double CP from all battles. So it's extremely important to get, but it's also pretty hard. Um, now, there's a cheap way to get it. Um, in order to get the growth egg, you need to complete Sea Stone Mission 55 back on Grand Pulse. So if you recall, on the last episodes back on Grand Pulse, we completed Sea Stone Missions 1 through 34. So Missions 1 through 34 are out of the way. However, to get the growth egg, we're going to skip ahead and go ahead and complete Sea Stone Mission 55. Alright, so Sea Stone Mission 55 can be really hard, especially if you're under level. And the cheap way to get it or to, to defeat the enemy is to use Vanille's Death Spell. So, so in, since we've reached Crystarium Stage 10, we're going to beat him um, regularly without Vanille's Death Spell. So we're going to have a little fun. Now, before we set off back to Grand Pulse, we need to make the right preparations. So we're going to need to craft and upgrade a few accessories. Alright, so first of all, let's go ahead and get rid of uh, all of our accessories that are just clogging up our inventory. Or not all of our accessories, all of our components that are clogging up our inventory. Now we have a lot of components. As you can see, there's like five pages worth of components. Now, you may be wondering what they're used for. Well, they can help you upgrade your weapons if you add them all or your accessories. But we're going to use the best components to upgrade our weapons. That way we're not spending 10 minutes upgrading one weapon. Now, the best components, of course, cost a lot of money. So I'll show you guys how to grind for a gill later on in the game. For now, let's go ahead and get rid of all the um, components that we do not need. So if you're asking which components you should keep, <clears throat> I highly suggest to, uh, first of all, categorize your components. If you don't know how to categorize your components, press Y and pull up the main menu. Then go to inventory and go to your components and press X or square on, on PlayStation. And it'll say categorize and choose to categorize it. And then you can, now your components are all neat in a list. So the stuff that you should worry about keeping and do not sell is all of your upgrade crystals. Such as Traps of Hydrin, Scarletite, Emnar, Uranite, Perviskite. Colvitite, Rodro Crossite, Millerite. Now you can know your upgrade crystal because to the left of their name, it'll show a little crystal. Make sure you keep all the little crystals that you find. And less up at the top, it'll say the description of each uh, component. If it says can be sold for a premium, then you can sell it for a good amount of cash. Otherwise, keep it. Alright, now we're going to talk about the um components that will level up and give you experience these can be indicated by the bolts so to the left of their names you can see bolts now there's only a few of these that we're going to keep so if you want to know the ones that you should keep you should keep all your particle accelerators ultra compact reactors perfect conductors super conductors And that's it. Sell everything else. Finally, we're going to talk about the experience multiplier components. Now these can be indicated by bones to the left of their name. So as you can see, we had the crystals and then the bolts. Now up at the top, we'll have the bones. Now these things don't give you any experience. Instead, they're just used to build your multiplier. So now you can keep 
any of these as you want because they all like have a pretty good use but if you want to sell them all to make money then uh, I would suggest to sell everything except for sturdy bones <clears throat> and uh, barb tails so sell all your sturdy bones and all your barb or sell all of your components except for sturdy bones and barb tails you want to keep the sturdy bones and barb tails everything else you can sell so again the stuff you should keep are all of your upgrade crystals ultra compact reactors particle accelerators perfect conductors and superconductors sturdy bones and barb tails get rid of everything else this will give you a good amount of cash that you can spend so that we can buy the more expensive components and start upgrading <clears throat> alright so I'm gonna quickly show you how I wipe out my inventory So as you can see I sold all or I sold all of the components I didn't need. Alright, so now let's talk about the upgrades. Now the things that we're gonna need, the accessories that we're gonna need towards the post game, well there's a lot. So I'm gonna go off with the ones that we need for now and I'll cover the rest later. So for now we need to um, work on getting two power gloves, two Majestic or two power gloves fully upgraded and two warding glyphs fully upgraded now if you want you can get three power gloves and three warding glyphs but for now all we need is two and two all right and the next things we're going to need is three imperial armlets now because it costs a lot of money to get imperial armlets because you need a dark matter to transform the royal omelet into a into an imperial omelet what we're going to need is we're going to get one imperial omelet and you should already have one because you get it when beating the time on eliminator boss towards the end of the game so we got one imperial omelet and we're and we should have two royal omelets if you don't you can buy them at the shop for 10,000 gil or something like that actually I think it's more than that hold on Let 
Let me see where they buy them at. Right here. Okay. Um, Royal Omelets cost 200,000 gil. So hopefully you have a couple saved up. Which you should have if you've got if you've been following this guide, then we've got all the treasure balls that we could possibly get so far. So among those treasure balls, you should have found three royal omelets. So you only need two, and you need one imperial omelet. Alright, so now we're gonna have to upgrade those um, accessories I just mentioned. So let's go ahead and talk about the stuff we need. First of all, go over to Creature Comfort and buy 99 sturdy bones and 99 barb tails. <clears throat> All right, once you've done that, go over to Lenora's garage and buy 99 superconductors. Now that costs 83,000 gil, and we need more than 99, but all we can carry is 99, so we're gonna have to come back here. So for now, just buy 99 superconductors. If you don't have enough gill for this, then you can wait, and whenever I do the gill farming um, strategy, you can check that out. Or I already have a gill farming strategy for before we beat the game, so if you want to go back and check that out, you can make some serious gill really quick that way. If not, just reference this video for later, and whenever you have enough gill, come back and make these upgrades, because they're very important. Alright, so once you have the uh, right accessories, go ahead and, uh, or components, go ahead and categorize your components again. That way they're all nice and neat, and we only have a couple because we sold them all. Alright, now let's talk about the upgrades. So we're going to start off with the power glove. Alright, so if you found a power glove back in the treasure ball in Eden Hall, then you should already have one power glove at level one. So that will save you some time. If not, you can use a warrior's wristband. So I'll show you how to do the warrior's wristband first. All right, first of all, go ahead and use, go ahead and use 36, 30 bones on the warrior wristband. This will give you a times three multiplier. Then use 37 superconductors and that should uh, get it to max level. Its max level is 11 by the way. Alright so now our warrior's wristband is fully upgraded. Now you can use a scarletite to transform it into a power glove. Now if you don't have scarletites then I highly suggest to fight the sacrifices that can be found in Eden Hall. Because they have a high drop rate for Scarletites. Because Scarletites cost $100,000, but why spend 100000 gil to buy Scarletite when you can get it for free as a drop from the sacrifices? Alright, so go ahead and use one Scarletite. And this will transform the Warrior's Wristband into the Power Glove. And the Power Glove should be at level 9. Alright, so now the strength has increased to 230. Now let's keep going. Um... Go back to the power glove. Now make sure you're upgrading the power glove and not the power wristband. Because the power wristband sucks. It's You got to upgrade the power glove. Alright, so go ahead and put 36 30 bones again. Onto the power glove. This will give you a times 3 multiplier. Then go ahead and use 26... 26 superconductors and bam the power glove is at its max level it gives you a strength of 250 all right so we need two power gloves so that was I showed you the strategy on how to use a warrior's wristband and turn it into a power glove now let's talk about the power glove that we found out of a treasure ball so if you don't already have a power glove in your inventory, then you can just um, buy another warrior's wristband from the shop. Um, BMW Outfitters, they sell warrior's wristbands for 10,000 gil. Buy another one and do the same thing we just did, and so you have two power gloves. Now if you already have a power glove, 
you have to do a little bit less work. So let's go back to the shop and go back to Lenora's garage. Let's go ahead and get 99 more superconductors. So you should have 36 left if you bought 99 earlier. So go ahead and buy 63 more. That way we'll be at 99 again. Alright, now let's go to upgrade. Alright, so find the power glove. And go ahead and use the rest of your 27 sturdy bones. This will give you a times 2 multiplier. Now we can work on our bo barb tails now that we have used our sturdy bones. <clears throat> so go ahead and add 9 barb tails. And that will give you a times 3. Alright, so once you have a times 3 again, go ahead and use 36 sturdy bones. Or no, go ahead and use, once you have a times 3 multiplier, go ahead and drop 60, 60, um, superconductors to the power glove. So, if your power glove is at level 1, take a look at the level carefully. If it's at level 1, go ahead and get a times 3 bonus multiplier, and then use 60 superconductors. This will bring it up to level 10. And you're, you're only a thousand experience away. Then you can go ahead and use three more superconductors to max it out. And voila. Power glove. Max level. So again, use 36 sturdy bones or 36 barb tails to get a times 3 multiplier. And then you can use 61 superconductors to max it out at max level. So it's 61 superconductors you need. If the power glove is at level 1, add 36 sturdy bones and then 61 superconductors. And if it's still not maxed out, add a couple more superconductors and it will be. You want two power gloves with a star next to it, meaning they're at its max level. And this will give you strength plus 250 for each one. Alright, so now that we have two power gloves, now we need to get two warding glyphs. So the warding glyphs are the same as the power gloves, except the power gloves gives you strength and the warding glyph gives you magic. But they're the same thing. Also, the, the Sorcerer's Mark will upgrade the same exact way as the Warrior's Wristband did into the Power Glove. So the Sorcerer's Mark will work the same way for the Warding Glyph. So let's start off with the Sorcerer's Mark. First of all, we need more Superconductors. So go back to the shop and buy more Superconductors. Go ahead and get 99 more. Alright, now let's upgrade the <clears throat> Sorcerer's Mark into the Warding Glyph. Alright, so go ahead and use 36 Barb Tails on the Sorcerer's Mark. This will get you a times 3 experience multiplier. Once you have a times 3, go ahead and add 37 perfect conductors. Or 37 superconductors. My bad. 37 superconductors. This will max out the Sorcerer's Mark at its max level, which is 11. Alright, so once you've maxed out the Sorcerer's Mark, go ahead and use a Scarletite Upgrade Crystal. And this will turn the Sorcerer's Mark into the Warding Glyph at level 9. <clears throat> Alright, so once you have the Warding Glyph at level 9, go ahead and add 36 30 Bones, or 36 Barb Tails, either one. Once you have a times 3 again, go ahead and add 26 Perfect Conductors. Alright, so when you add 26 perfect conductors to the warding glyph, it'll max out its level. 
And by the way, the Warding Glyph's max level is 11 also. And this will increase your magic by 250. Alright, so now we have two fully upgraded Power Gloves and one Warding Glyph. Now we, we need to get one more Warding Glyph. So go back to the shop, go to Creature Comforts, and let's buy 99 Sturdy Bones and 99 more Barb Tails. Now go down to Lenora's Garage and get 99 more Superconductors. So this costs quite a lot of gill, so if you don't have the, enough gill, then you need to do the gill grinding spot to get enough. Which is why we sold our components, so that we would have a little bit of extra gill. Alright, so once you have, uh... Once you have the right components, go down to the warding glyph. Now you should have found a warding glyph in a treasure ball back in Orphan's Cradle. If you didn't find the Warding Glyph in a treasure ball at Orphan's Cradle, you can buy another Sorcerer's Mark if you don't already have one from BMW Outfitters for 10,000 gil. And do the same thing we did before to get the Warding Glyph to its max level. Alright, so if you did find a Warding Glyph out of that treasure ball, then go ahead and add 36 30 bones to it because it's at level 1. This will get you the times 3 multiplier. Then go ahead and dump 60 superconductors onto it. Or no, go ahead and uh, dump 61 superconductors onto it. And this will get you really close to max level. So if you add one more superconductor, bam, you're there. The warding glyph is at level 60, or the warding glyph is at its max level of 11. And the strength has, or the magic has increased by 250. Alright, so if you want to know how to instantly get the Warding Glyph from level 1 to level 11, which is its max level, go ahead and use 36 30 bones to get a times 3 multiplier. And then use 62 superconductors, and bam, you're instantly at its max level. So remember, 62 superconductors with a times 3 multiplier. And that is if it has le if and that is if it's at level one. All right, so now we have two power gloves and two warding glyphs. Now let's go ahead and uh, get our third one. Now this is optional. If you don't have enough money for this, then don't worry about it. You don't need three of each. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a Warrior's Wristband since I don't have one yet. Alright, so go back to Lenore's Garage and buy... Make sure you're maxed out at 99 Superconductors again. Alright, so if you don't have enough money for this, don't worry about it because you need to save at least... 100,000 gil. That way we can upgrade the Imperial armlets and the Royal armlets. Alright, so let's quickly upgrade these because we're running low on time. Go to your accessory. Find the uh, Warrior's wristband. And we're going to use 36 30 bones. Now we're going to use 16 perfect conductors. Or no, we're going to use 37 perfect conductors. So on the Warrior's Wristband, use 36 30 bones and then 37 per superconductors. And bam, your Warrior Wristband is at its max level. Now use a Scarlet Tite to transform it into the Power Glove at level 9. Then use 36 more Sturdy Bones. And 27 or 26 superconductors. And bam, we have a third power glove at its max level, strength plus 250. Alright, so now we need to go back to the shop one more time so we can get enough superconductors. And I'm going to go ahead and max out my sturdy bones as well. All 
All right, now let's upgrade the third warding glyph. <clears throat> so go to your accessories and find a sorcerer's mark. If you don't have one, you can buy one at BMW Outfitters for 10,000 gil. All right, so let's go ahead and add 36 barb tails. That'll give you a times three multiplier. And then use 37 superconductors. And bam, the sorcerer's mark is at its max level. Now use the scarletite to transform it. And the sorcerer's mark turns into the warding glyph. Magic plus 230. Now use 36 barb tails to get a times three multiplier again. And then use 26 superconductors. And bam, we have a third warding glyph at its max level. Magic plus 250. Alright, so we now have three power gloves at its max level. Which will give us strength plus 250 for each one. And we have three warding glyphs at their max level. Which will give us magic plus 250. <clears throat> Alright, so now let's talk about the Imperial Armlet. So the Imperial Armlet will only get up to level 5 or 6. So find the Imperial Armlet. Now, you should have one in your inventory. Because we got it from beating the Taimont Eliminator boss fight. So you should have one. <clears throat> now what the Imperial Armlet does is it gives you the resist damage plus 10% ability. This means that you, it will resist the damage by 10% for magic and physical attacks so damage all around is resisted by 10 so we're going to upgrade it to its max level so we can resist damage by 20% all right so start off go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and use the rest of my sturdy bones or the rest of my barb tails <clears throat> and bam we have a uh, times three experience multiplier so you can use either 36 30 bones or 36 barb tails, either one, and it'll give you a times three bonus multiplier. All right, now go ahead and use your superconductors. Let's go ahead and use 18 superconductors. And bam, the Imperial Armlet is at its max level. Now the Imperial Armlet's max level is six. So once you bring up the Imperial Armlet, use 36 sturdy bones for a times three multiplier, and then 18 superconductors. This will max out the Imperial Armlet at its max level of six, which raises its ability resist damage from 10% to resist damage by 20%. So now we are completely we are resistant to physical and magical damage by 20%. All right. So since we only have one imperial armlet, we need to make three more or two more. Now, unless you have a lot of money, we probably won't be able to do it because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to fully upgrade a royal armlet. And then when it's, once it's at its max level, you use a Dark Matter, which costs 840,000 gil to buy in a shop. But you use a Dark Matter on the Royal Armlet once it's at its max level, and it transforms into the Imperial Armlet. So since we don't have enough gil for two Dark Matters, what we're going to do is we're just going to fully upgrade two Royal Armlets. Because a fully upgraded Royal Armlet will give you the resist damage plus 5% fully upgraded it will give you resist damage plus 15 percent so the imperial imperial armlet will give you plus resist damage plus 20 percent and a fully upgraded royal armlet will give you resist damage plus 15 percent so that's going to have to do for now because we don't have enough guilt but it'll definitely help you out nonetheless so let's go ahead and quickly max out two royal armlets so we're going to have to go back to the store
Let's get some more sturdy bones and barbed tails real quick. And let's go ahead and get some more superconductors. Just go ahead and get 99 because we're going to need them in the future anyways. If you don't have enough to get 99, get at least, uh, at least 50. You're going to need at least 50 superconductors. Alright, so now let's talk about upgrading the Imperial or the Royal Armlets to their max level. Now the Royal Armlets max level is like 16 or something like that. I'm not quite sure. So we're going to have to experiment a little bit. So go ahead and add 36 30 bones for the times 3 multiplier. And let's go ahead and dump, um, now let's go ahead and dump 20 superconductors. And that will get your royal armlet up from level 1 to level 10. Alright, so we're really close. So let's go ahead and add 36, 30 bones again. And let's add three superconductors. And bam. The Royal Armlet is at its max level of 11. So the Royal Armlet's max level is at 11. <clears throat> In order to get the Royal Armlet from level 1 to its max level of 11, you need to use 36 30 bones and 23 superconductors. Alright, so now that we have one Imperial Armlet fully maxed out and one Royal Armlet fully maxed out, all we need is one more Royal Armlet. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So let's uh, go ahead and use either 36 Barb Tails or 36 30 Bones, either or. And that'll give you an experience bonus of times 3. Now go ahead and add 23 Superconductors. And bam, the Royal Armlet is at its max level of 11. So that will give the Royal Armlet at level 1 resist damage plus 5%. And then the Royal Armlet at its max level of 11 resist damage by 15%. Still not as good as the Imperial Armlet with the resist damage plus 20%. But the resist damage plus 15% by a fully upgraded Royal Armlet will definitely work good enough for now. Because we don't have enough money for Dark Matters. Alright, so now that we have the equipment, let me show you how to quickly equip it to the right characters. So first of all, let's remove e the equipment from all our main battle characters. Alright, so now let's go ahead and equip them properly. Or, hold on. So starting off with, um... Why did I do that? Starting off with Lightning. Let's go ahead and give her one Power Glove. Or actually... Alright, so starting off with Lightning. Go ahead and give her the Adamant Bangle, fully upgraded. One Power Glove. <clears throat> one Warden Glyph. And finally, a pair of sprint shoes. Now the reason why we have mixed it up for Lightning is because she is both a Commando and a Ravenger. So we're going to be switching her back and forth. She's primarily a Ravenger, but then she can be used as a Commando too. So we're going to go ahead and give her one of each. Now this is optional. Now if you only had enough money to make two Power Gloves and two Warding Glyphs, then you don't need to equip lightning with either one. Instead, we're going to throw them both on to Vanille and Fang. 
Alright, so this is the setup you should have for lightning, only if you were able to make three power gloves and three warding glyphs. Alright, so moving on, let's go ahead and talk about Vanille. <clears throat> Alright, so for for Vanille. Oh, I messed up, guys. I messed up. I sure did. I messed up. Alright, let's go ahead and uh I messed up. My bad, my bad. Alright, we're gonna have to redo lightning all over again. Alright, so for lightning, you can go ahead and equip her with the adamant bangle. And go ahead and equip her with the imperial armlet. And finally, a pair of sprint shoes. Now I'll give you you guys the fourth accessory later. Because I'm not really sure what we're going to use just yet. Alright, so for Vanille, this is the setup we're going to have for Vanille. I go ahead and use... Three Warding Glyphs. I right, know, two warding glyphs, what am I doing? A royal armlet? And finally, sprint shoes. Alright, so Vanille gets two warding glyphs, one royal armlet, and a pair of sprint shoes. Alright, next up is Fang. Go ahead and give her two power gloves. A royal armlet. And finally, sprint shoes. Alright, so you can go ahead and give lightning um, that other warding armlet if you have it. If you don't have it, Go ahead and give her the Aurora Scarf or one of the catalogs if you want. Alright, so the final equipment setup. We have Lightning with the Omega Weapon, an Adamant Bangle fully upgraded, Warding Glyph fully upgraded, Imperial Armlet fully upgraded, and Sprint Shoes. Vanille has her Nirvana ultimate weapon. Two warding glyphs fully upgraded. One royal armlet fully upgraded and sprint shoes. Finally, Fang has her ultimate weapon Kane's Lance. Two power gloves fully upgraded. One royal armlet fully upgraded and a pair of sprint shoes. <clears throat> so again, the warding glyphs, each one will increase magic by 250. And the Royal Armlet fully upgraded will increase both physical and magical resistance by 15%. The Imperial Armlet will increase both physical and magical resistance by 20%. The Adamant Bangle will increase your maximum HP by 1500. And Sprint Shoes is auto haste. Finally for Fang, each Power Glove will increase strength by 250. And the Royal Armlet will increase physical and magical resistance by 15%. Sprint shoes for auto haste. So you can quickly look it over. This is my setup for lightning. Vanille. And Fang.
All right, so now that we have uh, the right accessories, I'm going to end the episode here. And on the next episode, we're going to go ahead and hunt down Sea Stone Mission 55 so we can get that growth egg and start getting double CP. See you guys next time on the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 13.